After months of speculation about when the Federal Reserve might raise the short-term interest rate, well, it's happened. Now, what in the world does that actually mean in practical terms? Joining me this morning is Mark Lloyd, our go-to guy from the Lloyd Group, a retirement and money management group. Thank you. How long has it been? You know, 10 years. You know, back the last time they, rose, they raised interest rates, we didn't have an iPhone. The iPhone. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it just goes to show you how long it's been. <laughs> and, you know, there had been some speculation, finally, that the economy was coming around back mm -hmm. in September and this was going to happen, but it didn't happen then. Why not then and why now? Well, I think the feds were skittish, uh, but what it does, what this represents, is that it represents that the economy is getting better. It's affirmation that the economy is getting better. And, and, and for the feds to say, Janet Yellen, the feds to say, that there may be three more rate increases in 2016, was very good news for the economy. And what you saw immediately was that the market spiked up, but then the next day for two straight days it went back down again. So there's a lot of volatility still in the market, even though the Fed said that the economy is doing better. That's why this is just a little baby step. We didn't leap into any sort of big change. We're putting our toe in the water. So imagine it like this, that the markets and the economy have been on training wheels. And, and we had uh, last year the Feds finished QE3, which was buying a lot of government bonds mm -hmm. to prop up the economy as well as keeping interest rates low. So they they took that set of training wheels off last year. This year they took off the training wheels for the interest rates and now they're starting to rise a little bit, but we're on our own and we just have to see how this works. So what does this mean then? Even though it's just a little bit, what does this mean for our viewers and their pocketbooks? Because we're coming right out of Christmas. <clears throat> a lot of us have overspent a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> we're you know, thinking about all sorts of things. Right. What does it mean? Well, there's positives and negatives. You will see a little bit of a bump up on the same savings account, maybe if you're a CD depositor or a money market investor, you'll see a little bit of a bump up there, but a quarter of a point really means nothing. Because as, you, as inflation goes up and the cost of goods go up, as the dollar gets stronger, you're still losing money safely when, you, when your interest rates are lower than the inflation rate. So that's not going to be a major impact. Another thing that you'll see, though, is you'll start to see where credit card interest rates will rise quicker. Same thing with adjustable rate mortgages. So it does make sense now that we know what's going to happen in 2016, two things. Number one, start paying off those credit cards. Get that debt paid off. Make that a goal for 2016 to do that. Number two, if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, it may make sense to go ahead and refinance and lock in these rates because it's not going to be any lower. What if I don't have an arm? What if I'm a young person going out to look for my first house and I'm going to get a standard mm -hmm. mortgage? Traditional loan. Mm -hmm. What is the, or Yes, loan. What does that mean for me? Well, you know, what I like to recommend, I'm, I'm not opposed to a 30-year mortgage, as long as we're disciplined in paying it, maybe even paying it quicker, mm -hmm. because what that does, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room in case we have a job loss or something like that. We don't have that higher payment. But again, you want to lock in that lower rate. But this is a signal, it's time to get rid of debt you don't need. Absolutely. It's time to, if you were thinking about buying a house, get to it. Absolutely. Another thing that we'll start to see is, is different uh, cost of living increases, uh, uh, the inflation rising. We're going to see foreign goods a little bit cheaper because as the dollar strengthens, we can now buy Japanese or maybe European goods a little bit cheaper because our dollar is worth more versus the euro or versus the yen. But on the other hand, you're going to see less foreign money coming here buying U.S. goods because the dollar gets stronger. Okay, Mark Lloyd, thank you so much for helping us understand this a little bit. He's not going away, though. He's back in the 9 o'clock hour. He's going to help us with tax time preps, things we need to do to get ready for the April deadline, which, as you know, will be here before we know it.